A portion of this video has been sponsored by Onshape. This is a giant DIY 3D printed quadcopter, and it actually flies, like surprisingly well. All right, let's rewind and talk about how we got here, because it wasn't easy. Almost every part on here was made using standard home 3D printers. Even the motors are mostly 3D printed. In my last video, I showed the process of building this frame, which is 100% plastic. The arms of the quadcopter were created using a generative design tool to reduce the weight without compromising the strength. They also just look sick. Using some dovetails, they attach to a main body which keeps everything rigid and houses all the electronics. Most of the big parts are done at this point, but there's still a substantial amount of wiring to do. To start, I finished winding the last couple motors and then soldered connectors to them. This was definitely my least favorite part of the project since winding each one of these motors takes several hours. And it kind of hurts your fingers a little bit. I can't emphasize enough how giant these motors are and having four of them is going to be crazy. Each one weighs about a kilogram, so that means 65% of the quad's weight is literally just the motors. Both batteries combined weigh less than one motor. Each motor is controlled by an ESC or electronic speed controller. These things control the speed of the motor based on the throttle input. But to run these big motors, a lot of power is needed. So two six cell LiPo batteries are wired up in parallel to supply the roughly 2,500 watts needed. Now quadcopters need to have some sort of flight controller and I am using this. Inside here is a Tinty microcontroller on a pretty basic PCB that I designed along with a couple simple sensors. To control the quad with this, I'm using Dreamflight, which was created a couple years ago by Nick Ream. If you haven't already, you should definitely check out his channel. There's a ton of good content on there and some more in-depth explanations of how his code works. To cover up the flight controller, I printed these two pieces, which very satisfyingly snap together. I also printed a piece just to completely cover the electronics bay. To attach this to the body, I used a double pivot hinge because, you know, it's fancy. I have this bad habit of just adding fans to things because I think it looks cool, and this project is no exception. So on the back of the drone there's this little 40 millimeter fan. Maybe it will help with the cooling because I'm sure the four 16 inch props right next to it aren't going to move enough air. To finish off the electronics bay, a tray fits right into the frame and holds the flight controller. Now I know what you might be asking, Michael, why did you use this janky homemade flight controller when you could have just used ArduPilot or Betaflight? Well, frankly, I was originally gonna use this Maytech flight controller with ArduPilot, but I figured the DIY flight controller goes more with the spirit of this build. Did it require more time and more tuning on my end? Yes. Did I tune it wrong and crash it multiple times? Also yes, but that's how we learn, right? With the electronics finished, the motors get installed along with their respective props. Now, the attentive viewers out there might notice that I'm using three blade props rather than the two blade props I was using in the last video. This is because for quads you need props that are mirrored from each other since two of the motors rotate in opposite directions from one another. I tried to find mirrored two blade props but didn't have much luck, so I just switched to three blade props which should give us more thrust anyway. And if I've learned anything, it's in thrust we trust. With everything finally ready, there's nothing left to do but try to fly this thing. Okay, so there's some good news and some bad news. It flies, but not well. Clearly we need to do some tuning to the flight controller. I did a series of tests modifying the PID gains. There is technically a way you can calculate the theoretical gains, but in my experience, just changing them depending on the way the quad is acting is the quickest way to get something flying well. After a bit of tuning and several pretty tough landings, there were finally some promising results. So next, I decided to go for a little bit longer flight and get it a little higher in the air. What could possibly go wrong? As it turns out, a lot of things can go wrong. As the quad was flying, it kept trying to drift and I was trying to fight it, but I really didn't have enough control authority because I turned the gains down so far. This drift took it directly towards a tree and I could just barely see it and then I heard this sound. 
I'm not gonna lie, hearing that crash was pretty painful. What was really frustrating though, was that I knew exactly what caused it. When I did some thrust testing with each of these motors, it showed that three of the motors were remarkably consistent, but one of them had about 5% less thrust. I'm not really sure what caused this, but I figured I'd just give it a shot as is and see if it worked. The motor with less thrust is motor number two, which is in the exact direction that this thing was drifting. So a little upset with myself for not fixing this problem before test flying, I collected the pieces of the drones and got back to work. All right, damage assessment time. Now, using my extreme engineering intuition, I think this is the part that failed. You can tell because most of it is now missing. I think the reason it broke here is because when the quad hit the ground, the momentum of the motor must be stopped by a force traveling through this dovetail. I actually did some testing for these type of forces in my last video, but during that testing, the arm piece of the dovetail is what broke. This time, the main body piece is what broke, and I think this is because I used this matte PLA to print it. This stuff looks good, but isn't very strong. So I picked up some PLA Plus to reprint it. One thing I also noticed is that this retaining piece here is completely broken. Look at that, the propeller can just spin freely now. For reference, on the other motors, you can see that that's the piece that holds the prop in place. I guess I need to print with more wall perimeters or something next time. Oh, and this thing also came off. I guess hot glue wasn't enough. Who would have guessed? So to fix everything, I reprinted all the broken parts. The new design for the tray that holds the flight controller now includes a few holes. This will allow me to use some threaded inserts and bolts to hold everything more securely. Also, big shout out to Stefan over at CNC Kitchen for selling some really nice threaded inserts. The pieces that hold the propeller also need to be replaced, which was really easy. All I needed was a 10 millimeter wrench, which was of course missing, and then remove the nut holding everything together and replace the printed pieces. Once everything is back together, we are ready to go do another test flight. This time, I went to my local RC field, so I had a little more space to fly. I was really happy with how this thing flew and frankly kind of surprised how stable it felt in the air. Let's go! Let's go! <laughs> that went so well. <laughs> to fix the weak motor problem, I ended up scaling that motor's throttle command slightly and also increasing the integral gain in the controller. I'm really excited to fly this more, but I think I need to get some bigger batteries first because I only got about two minutes of flight time. Let me know in the comments what you think I should do next with this. Maybe FPV or 3D printed propellers? I don't know. But what I do know is that this video required a ton of CAD work. CAD stands for Computer Aided Design, and it's how you make parts like this on a computer and then save them to make them for real. For some of the parts in this quadcopter, I used Onshape, which is also the sponsor of this video. This was really my first time using Onshape, and honestly, I was really impressed. It was really intuitive to get started with and has a ton of functionality built in already. And there's tons more coming in new updates. It's entirely cloud-based, so designs and changes are auto-saved and you can access them from anywhere. This is handy because you can grab measurements from your phone or just reference it when you need it. On past projects, I've noticed that CAD can be very hard to collaborate with others on. Onshape does a really good job of fixing this by tracking changes sort of like GitHub, and the cloud-based nature means that there's no giant files to share. Whether you're an engineer already or someone that's just getting started with CAD, it's definitely a very valuable tool at your disposal. The best part is you can use it for free. Go to the link in the description and check it out so you can use it in your next project. As always, thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you have any ideas for what I could do with this drone in the future and I'll catch you in the next one.